Hello, and welcome back to the Sustainable Brown Girl podcast. This show exists to connect Black, Brown, and Indigenous women who are interested in sustainability. Our goal is to inspire, encourage, and educate each other. From gardening, to thrifting, to minimalism, to veganism, and everywhere in between. We are all on a journey to taking care of our bodies and our planet. I'm your host, Ariel Green. We are living in a time now in June 2020 where the idea of buying black has only become mainstream in the last month. However, today's Sustainable Brown Girl has been doing the work to create an all-natural marketplace by all black artisans for the past few years. Black and Green offers carefully curated and quality tested skincare, hair care, menstrual care, and home products, just to name a few, that are all natural and made by black people. I'm so excited to talk to Dr. Christian Henderson about the importance of buying black and using natural products. We'll also get some tips on how to transition our beauty routine to be healthier for our bodies and the planet. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dr. Christian. You're welcome. Yeah, so let's just jump right into it. I'm so interested in your story. Can you tell us about your wellness journey and what inspired what inspired you to create Black and Green? Yeah, sure. I um I have a doctorate in public health. And so I've always been really interested in public health and different things that people can do to sustain their health. I found out that the products market to Black people were more toxic than products marketed in other demographics. They were formulated with ingredients that were linked to cancer and hormone disruption and reproductive damage. And I just thought this was absurd. And so I went on my own personal journey to try to find as many clean and natural brands for me to personally use as possible. Around that same process, a couple of months later, I read the book Our Black Year. And Our Black Year talks about the economic importance of Black people buying from black owned brands and how our dollar is more of an investment than like a you're you're more an investor than a consumer and so okay I was like okay perfect I'm convinced and so I decided that I wanted to buy natural products but I also wanted them to be black owned and so I had a long spreadsheet of all these different places I could go here to buy your toothpaste go here to buy your deodorant go here to buy your hair product and the list was so long and then I, and then like some, and then I had to test the products because like sometimes they would say, oh, it does this. And I would try it out. And it actually doesn't do that. And so it took a lot of work and a lot of effort to live black and live green. And so one day I was talking to my husband I was like, oh, this is so annoying. It takes so much work to do this. It's really important to me. I said, I just wish there was a marketplace where you can go buy things that were all natural and they were all green and they were all black owned. And then he said, hey, how about you just start it? So that's how black and green got started with me trying to solve my own problem. Wow. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about the book? And for anyone who doesn't know, why is it important to buy black? Yeah. So, the, I mean, the short term of it is like, see your dollar instead of as an investment, instead of being a consumer. When you are a consumer, you just buy things that you need. You don't really think about who created the product and who's behind the product and their family's behind the product. You just think about, okay, I need toothpaste. I'm going to go to the store and buy toothpaste. That's it. When you start to think of yourself instead of as an investor, and that's what the book talks about, like see your every dollar you spend is voting on which company gets to be successful. So you have that power. And a lot of people don't understand the power of their dollar spend. But after I understood the power of my dollar spend, it said, when you pick a, when you want to go buy from a black brand and you buy their product, you're investing in that family. You're investing in the community. And you don't do that when you go buy from a brand. You don't know who's behind it. You're buying from some big manufacturer. You aren't investing your dollar in the actual community. So once I started to see my dollar as an investment, um, then I want to be more conscious about what and who I was investing in. Right, definitely. You mentioned just a minute ago about how a lot of the products that are marketed to Black people are awful, you know, and me growing up, you know, I came from a 
family that didn't have a lot of disposable income. And so a lot of the times we were buying the cheapest thing. And, (laughs) and so it's like, okay, our shampoo is a dollar. Our soap is like a dollar, you know, like it's so cheap. And obviously when things are cheaper, they're made with lesser quality um, ingredients. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, now my mom has cancer and it's like, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, not, not, think about, well, are these products that we used to use what caused it? And so, you know, a lot of, like I was saying, a lot of black and brown communities may not have a lot of disposable income. And a lot of these natural products are a little bit more expensive. So do you have any ideas on how people with limited budgets can make better choices when it comes to their health and beauty products? I'm so happy you brought that up. Um, My prayers to your mom. So I know that's a fight that she's continuing to have. And so you're absolutely right. Natural products cost more. I I mean, what makes me feel better? I I have to explain why do natural products cost, cost more? So let me break it a little bit of it down to you. The reason why natural products cost more is because a toxic product, you can put tons and tons of chemicals in it to make sure it can sit on the shelf for three or four years. So those toxins that are formulated in that product allow the product to last for four or five years. So that way mm-hmm. the manufacturer of it doesn't have to keep throwing it out. So if I know I can make a batch of toothpaste and it can sit on the shelf for four years, I don't have to throw it away. With natural products, it might only have a shelf life of six months. So after six months has passed, you have to throw your next batch out. So that's the reason why um, natural products end up costing more is because the shelf life is going to be on the lower side because you won't have all the toxic chemicals to make it last forever and ever. Okay. The next question is, okay, how do you convince people that are already tight on budget? How do you convince them that this is something to invest in? And I think it's more of a mindset thing. It's a self-care, it's a self-love thing. You spend money on something. Like, so, you, I mean, no matter where you are on the income range, that you spend money on something. We have mm-hmm. to have the conversation around saying, hey, this is something that's worth you investing in. It's worth you not getting the cheapest this and the cheapest that and the cheapest lotion and cheapest shampoo because it's going to, it's going to have this re- results. It's going to impact your health. And you are valuable. So you want to make sure that you invest your dollars in something that's valuable. And so I think like back when I was younger, people always liked the thing that made them seem cool or it made them seem like fly. So um, that was always like on the top of their list. If we can change the conversation that the thing that makes you seem cool is having a natural product. If we can change the way that people look at it so it can be seen as like, hey, this is something I aspire to. This is something that I want. So when I get my next dollar, I can go buy a better lotion than buying the cheap $1 lotion that I can get at like the dollar store. Yeah. I think um, over the past few years, it's been normalized. I, a lot of people making soap and stuff like that, uh, you know, making more handmade products. So mm-hmm. it does seem like a lot of people are becoming more aware of the importance of using uh, natural products. So yeah, that's great. Um, and one of the things that I transitioned to first was natural deodorant mm-hmm. uh, because you know, it, it, there's the time where it was really big about the uh, aluminum and, mm-hmm. and regular deodorant causes like Alzheimer's and cancer and all that. So that was one of the first things that I transitioned to. And um, I was talking to my sister about it and she's like, there's no antiperspirant and natural deodorant. So it's like, I'm sweating, like maybe I don't smell or, but I'm just sweating all the time. So is, do you know of any deodorants that have antiperspirant or is it just, you know, that's what's the cancer causing awful thing and the deodorant. So it's best just to leave it out. Yeah, that's a really good question. I honestly haven't like researched it specifically because I never had the request, but now I will go look and see if I can find an antiperspirant that's also like also natural. That's really interesting. I never have looked that up before. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. So for someone who is looking to transition to natural products, where should they start? Yeah, I get this question all the time about where, where should we start? Like I'm new to this world. Like what, where should I start? The biggest thing I always say is try to figure out the things that are most toxic in your home. And so you can hop online and just say, 
like you can Google like what most toxic things. And so some of the things that come up like air fresheners are really something that's really toxic. Um, so that's usually a good place to start. Like if you're using an air freshener now, go with a natural air freshener. Although like air fresheners, I know, are not very popular. And so um, that is something that I always think is a good place to start. Then I, if, depending on like how money is, I always tell people to start with like the wool dryer bulb. I know I used to use dryer sheets and I just throw them away. I'm creating waste and creating trash. And the good thing about the wool dryer balls, you buy them one time and you can use them forever. So it saves you money. Wow. You only have to buy the wool dryer balls one time. The only thing you really have to buy is more essential oils because I put a couple of drops of essential oils on my dryer balls before I throw them in the dryer. And so I do have to keep buying essential oil, but I don't have to keep buying um, dryer sheets. So that's something I always tell people to to do. Um, I always think that's really important. And then I think you're like anything that comes into contact with your skin and your hair um, seeps into your bloodstream and so you want to be really careful about like deodorants and like uh, lotions and body butters and things like that that just sit on your skin so that's also a really good place to try to remove the toxins and see okay go look up the ingredients on your lotion that you use right now and go to the environmental working group and just type all those ingredients in and see where they rank that product and so you can know hey is this something really toxic that I'm using is it for me to change or not so that's something I would really encourage because I know that oftentimes we don't know what those ingredients mean on the back of products and, and we really just don't know. And so for black and green, we have listed a toxic 20 list. So that's a good place to start too. go to the black and green website, print off that toxic 20 list. If you have any products that have that one of those ingredients in them, cut it out. Like that's a good place to start. If you want to yeah. take step two, you can go to the environmental working group. You can type in the ingredients on your products and you can see how do they rank. If it ranks too high, cut it out. So you basically it's a, you got to go through your closet and figure out like where do you want to spend money and slowly do it one at a time. I mean, you're not going to make the change overnight. So we don't want to make people feel like I have to change everything today because you probably can't afford to change everything today. So if you go through the environmental working group and you can slowly start figuring out, okay, what's the most toxic things in my routine that I can start to change? And then a good place to start too is like if you don't have products you're really attached to. So if you don't really love your hair products, then that's a good place to start because you it's already a need that's not being met. So if you don't really like your hair products, then start there. If you don't really like your toothpaste, then start there. If you don't really like your deodorant, then start there. If you don't really like your skincare, then start there. You start wherever you feel like it's not really meeting your needs. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree that it's a process. It can be a years long process to transition to a more sustainable lifestyle for sure. Exactly. Um, so let's see, um, what I kind of want to transition a little bit. So I know last year you were in a really scary car crash that left you in a coma for a while. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us about that? But really what I'm interested in was how, if any way, did it make you Let's see. How do I want to word this? Ask your question, girl. Don't be shy. Okay. In any way, did it make you realize more that you should have a healthier lifestyle? Like, did it affect how you felt about the lifestyle that you were living? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, the, I was. I feel like I was blessed because I had a healthier lifestyle. I feel like my body was in a really good position to mm -hmm. And I feel like if I did not have a healthy lifestyle, my body might not have been in that same position and it might not, my outcome might not have been as pleasant as it was. And so I think it goes hand in hand. I think because I did all the things to ensure my health, I think that my body was more prepared to do the things they need to do to make sure mm. I was So I think it goes hand in hand. Like there's products I sell, like there's a product I sell that, um, that helps with your memory. And so that was something I always drank. And so when after me being in the hospital, I think that I already had healthy habits that allowed me to fight better. And I, that's the reason why I would encourage people to create those healthy habits now. You don't want to wait yeah. until you have a health a, a catastrophe or a health issue to try to start eating clean and doing and start using clean products. You don't want to wait until the health issue already happens. Like go ahead and 
adopt that lifestyle now and try to like ward it off from happening. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. So last week, um, I was watching your live about, well, you just did a, an Instagram live impromptu. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you mentioned was some ideas that you have for black and green going forward. Mm -hmm. So can you let us know if you want, um, what are some, some of the next things that you have planned for black and green? Yeah. When the, I, well, first I'll tell you what's my big vision for black and green, um, black and green. My big vision is for black, women, black people to use natural products, for that to be normalized, for black people to use natural products. My second vision was me to create a space for black entrepreneurs to thrive. They they have a harder time getting into marketplaces. And so I wanted to create a marketplace so they can they can thrive, they can build, and someone's buying their stuff in bulk. And so I know that's really important to my artisans. Um, so that was something I really wanted to accomplish with Black and Green. And then I want to just keep helping artisans thrive. So whether it's getting funding or whether it's finding bottles, or whether it's getting a label design or whether it's doing formulation, these, uh, whether it's doing a moving to a fulfillment center, there's all these steps that you need to make a successful business. I want to help businesses from the complete end. Right now, only doing the marketplace, but I want to help grow and help them do everything. When you're ready for fulfillment, I can help with that. When you want to do your packaging, figure out where it comes, I can help with that. When you're trying to do your label design, I want to be able to help with that. So my goal is to help Black entrepreneurs be successful. That's awesome. Yeah, we definitely need that support because, you know, it's kind of tough to find that um, outside of our community. Mm -hmm. One of my last questions is, what is one thing that anyone can do to be more sustainable? Mm, what's one thing that anyone can do to be more sustainable? That's a really good question. Sustainable. Okay, I, first, I'm going to ask you a question as I try to think of my answer. What is your definition of sustainable? To me, sustainable, my broad definition is making better choices for our planet mm -hmm. in whichever, in whatever way you can. So if that for you means like switching your deodorant or like making better choices for our planet and your body. Um, so if it means switching your deodorant, if it means not using plastic wrap, if it means like you just things healthier choices in general <laughs> mm. I don't know that's kind of broad yeah no that's that's okay because my thought was that sustainable is kind of broad too so I wanted to see yeah. if you saw it the same way and so I'm a big believer that mother earth gave us everything everything you need mother earth has and so I really don't believe that we don't need chemical we don't need chemicals and things like that to make things be, we don't need that stuff. And so yeah. there's a reason why we're introducing it. And so I really want people to be conscious about what they're doing and ask their question, can I do this with something else? So like something that we're doing on Black and Green is that I was, I was getting tired of every time I went grocery shopping, I had to always throw my produce into these plastic bags. Like, oh, this mm -hmm. is a big waste. So when I come home, I just throw this, these bags away. This is a big waste for my environment. And so we're making reusable produce bags that we're selling on Black and Green. So you can, the same way that people have reusable Grocery bags, you can now throw your produce bags in those same grocery bags as you go and shop and buy tomatoes. You throw them in a reusable bag and, you know, then, then buy oranges, throw them in a reusable bag, buy, you know, buy something else, cucumbers, throw them in a reusable bag. You go home, take it out, then you can reshop with those reusable bags again. So I think it's really important to try to find ways that you can be reusable and, and use things more than like once. I think that's really, really important and try not yeah. to. Um, always use something like for the one time like I, I really try to get rid of like using paper like for instance in my house I don't have like a, a paper towel we don't do paper towels we have like we have like napkins that we wash and that that's what we do instead of using paper towels so we try to find ways or make habits where we aren't um constantly Re reusing things or throwing things away. I try not to throw things in the trash can as much as I can. And also thinking about what I eat. I think a part of being sustainable is eating sustainable food. So I try not to eat processed foods. I try to eat natural foods as much as possible. So I eat fruits and vegetables. And um, I'm a pescatarian. I'm not a vegan. I don't know if I will ever be a vegan. I thought about it, but I'm not sure from there yet. 
So I'm a yeah. vegetarian, which means I only eat fish and seafood. And so that is working for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said earlier, it's a, definitely a transition, just trying to see where you can make changes, especially starting out like little changes like, oh, yeah, I can use these reusable produce bags rather than doing this. Like that's an easy change and it's pretty exactly. affordable too. Exactly. Um, yeah. So it's just little things here and there. Totally agree. You have to be thoughtful. You have to think about it. Like, I think what happens with me is like now I always have like my sustainable goggles on. So whenever I'm doing something mm-hmm. like, oh, this is so not good for the planet. What can I do to make it better? So I always am thinking in that lens. And I think that's the reason why the produce bags is a new product that we just created because I was so tired of going to the grocery store and wasting plastic. Yeah, exactly. Um, Speaking of produce bags, you know, I've seen a lot on Amazon, (laughs) you know, and I, and with being sustainable, like I want to make sure that everything is sourced sustainably. So how did you say you're making them yourself? Yeah, I went to a manufacturer and had them like like worked. I had them created for me, and because I couldn't find an artisan that was already creating them. So whenever I found a problem that artisan is not already solving, I try to solve it myself. And so I have a manufacturer that has organic cotton, and she made a produce bag for me. That's awesome. I mean, I give you on my anti Amazon um, rant, but maybe I won't do that right now. Yeah, no, I I mean, yeah, I totally agree. It's definitely a lot of greenwashing going on over there. Yeah. Um yeah, so are, are your are those bags already on your website? They sure are. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely check that out. That's awesome. All right, Dr. Christian, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really great talking to you. Yeah, um will, awesome. will you tell us where everyone can find you? Sure, you can find us at www.blkgrn.com and we're on all the social media at blk and grn.com well, well not dot com on social but just on the, on the website <laughs> okay perfect thanks so much dr christian everyone make sure you go follow her and buy from her website black and green yep buy black and live green that's our motto Thank you so much for listening to this Sustainable Brown Girl podcast. Be sure to subscribe and share it if you loved it and leave a review. You can find us on Instagram at Sustainable Brown Girl and check out our Facebook community. We would love to have you there. Until next time, let's continue to make healthy choices for the health of our planet and the health of our bodies. Thanks for listening.